What's up everybody, it's Abby here and I just wanted to share with you all some of my quarantine epiphanies. Now I know I haven't made a video in a while and to be quite honest, I just haven't been up to it. There's a lot of things on my plate and on my mind. So like I said last time, I like to process before I put things out there just to make sure I'm representing my best self. And in this video, it's no different. So a few things that I wanna share with you all that have been just like, wow to me. And I've taken the time to process them and I wanted to share them. So the first thing is, I've never worked from home before. And I know since I started working, it has been one of those things that you wish that you could do or you hate on other people who are working from home and you're like, ooh, I wish I can work from home. But sometimes you just never know what you're truly asking for. And uh, for the past almost three months, that wish has come true and I've been working from home. But as a teacher, it's not as I um, imagined. It's not terrible, but it's just not, when you're forced to do it, it's different than when you want to do it. Like if you had the option. So being a teacher, if I could just choose to go to school maybe three days a week, but I can see my kids and play with my kids and do all the other stuff and then do administrative stuff at the house, that's different than saying, go home, do your full job, and you can't leave as well. So working from home has, uh, has been an interesting adjustment and I'm making the best of it, but you know, sometimes you just gotta be careful what you wish for. Thing number two is when you live alone, you have to feed yourself and like it's not something that you can just do infrequently like watering plants you have to like feed yourself every day and multiple times a day and so when i'm not prepared to feed myself i struggle you either eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich cereal but i like to cook too but managing my schedule managing you know sometimes i'm tired Managing just not wanting to do anything, managing not wanting to order every day. I really have, I got food poisoning uh, the other week from ordering, so I've kind of been on the fence about that in general. But when I don't cook, I have a hard time eating. And as y'all can tell, I can't afford to lose any more weight. So you gotta cook, you gotta make time to cook, you gotta schedule it out so you can feed yourself. I bought some extra glass bowls so I can actually meal prep. But living alone, man, you gotta, you gotta eat. What are you doing? So yeah, number three, you can truly do anything you put your mind to. Like you hear that sometimes, but honestly, I've seen it happen with myself. You can do anything you put your mind to or you're forced to do, eh. But anyway, I've been able to quickly adjust to this online distance learning platform and learning new systems. And thankfully it was already good with the videos and stuff like that. It's just turning it into something valuable that the students can connect with online. That's been a learning curve for me because I can connect with you all because you all want to go on here. You all want to watch me. Thank you, by the way. But um, it's been uh, a learning curve. But anyway, learning stuff online. Also, um, I did a 40 day prayer uh, devotional with some friends of mine, being able to really commit to that and be consistent has been awesome. And we've also just started, not even just started, we're pretty much halfway through doing a 30 day commitment to run or walk at least two miles a day. And that has been something that I actually look forward to. Um, and I'm happy when I'm able to, to accomplish that on a daily basis. So anything that you put your mind to, like I'm learning different softwares, I'm actually pushing myself physically, I'm trying to take care of myself better but you know truly what you focus on is what you can accomplish and if you you know put it at the back burner all the time it's gonna continue to be in progress so whatever you desire to work on let's get it done like you you can truly do it if you put your mind to it if you don't put your mind to it yeah you know trying to understand how people understand has been the biggest thing for me now we all know we're getting a lot of different messaging, videos, WhatsApps, emails, like whatever it is. And for me, the interesting thing that has been for me, especially with my students, is trying to understand how they understand. So I'll do an assignment and I'll try to explain it the best way I can and I give it to them. But sometimes when they turn the assignment in, the way they understood what I explained was something that I never thought of before. Like the students will turn in the assignment, like sometimes backwards or not even like, you know, picturesque backwards, but like if I ask for something specific, what they heard or what they understood was something totally different. And some of them were pretty good. Like I didn't see it that way. Like that was awesome. And it blows my mind to the fact that it can push me to 
do better and open up the creativity for students to be able to submit things different ways. And then it can allow me to be a little bit more you know, compassionate uh, when it comes to how people understand stuff and maybe uh, double check how I'm explaining things. Like if I want it a certain way, I need to spell it out. But then even still, some people just understand differently. So it's finding that balance to respect their process and also uh, be open to accepting things that have been interpreted differently. So what do you do? when you don't have to look at a screen. Do you still look at a screen? Do you still watch TV? Do you still browse the internet? I'm trying to find different ways to disconnect. And it's been difficult for me because I haven't in the past been like a reader. So like if I'm done with work and I wanna find something else to do that doesn't involve me scrolling or watching something, what am I gonna do? I usually default to a nap, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to do better. But my first response isn't to go like read a book or, you know, even though I've been exercising more, it's probably right now, probably like over 120 degrees outside in the UAE. It's crazy and it's humid like crazy. So what are those things I would call it like mindless or mindful activities that you do not to look at a screen? If you can help me out with that, comment below on some of the things that you do so I can have another idea because I don't know. The last thing I want to talk about is self-expression. Now, with everything going on, I've really been trying to connect deeper with my thoughts and how I'm feeling on certain situations in regards to COVID and in regards to racism and social injustices. And I am very mindful of what I put out there um, in video form and you know on social media and whatnot because I feel like it's important that I have the opportunity to process my thoughts and feelings so I can continue to represent myself in the manner that I would want to be respected in. So I'm not the type of person that's gonna take a situation and just go yell from the mountaintops when it comes down to it. I need time to figure out how I'm feeling so that I don't um, behave inappropriately and that I don't uh, disturb myself or my family. It's no surprise that I'm upset about the situation. Um, it's no surprise that I'm concerned for my family and my friends back in the U.S. Um, even processed with a few people last week that, you know, the fact that I'm in another country and I'm safe, you know, the feelings that surround that thing and knowing that I am not in harm's way, but my family and friends potentially are or could be and how there's nothing where there's little to nothing that I can do about it. So there's just feelings of, I won't necessarily call it guilt, but processing that in and of itself, but then also having to push forward with things that you're required to do. Um, I don't have a ton of time to sit here and, you know, be upset and all this other stuff when I still have things to do. So it's still gonna take me some more time to figure out what's going on and to not cloud my mind with all of the overwhelming media around this particular situation. But what I will ask you to do is just respect people's self-expression, respect how they choose to uh, handle the matter, whether you're for it or you're against it, but um, it's their right. Don't force or bully or judge a person because they might be a little bit more forthright when it comes down to it. And also on the other hand, be mindful of your self-expression. Yes, sometimes we wanna make people uncomfortable. Yes, we wanna make people aware, but just be mindful. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you all today. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video on my quarantine epiphanies and things that I'm processing and thinking about um, as we continue on in this journey. Um, I hope you all are safe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.